it's extremely important to take everything that analysts say with a grain of salt because the market is changing and the market is ignoring some of the basic Wall Street rules. But with that said, it's also probable in that we have this incredible uh, overvalued market right now, although some would argue that it's not overvalued. We have a huge amount of earnings. We have a new administration with a transition coming. People don't really know what to expect. Um, so I'd say the best thing to do is look at three different indicators. And I believe we may have mentioned these to you guys before. Number one is the transportation sector which we like to look at as the symbol for the ETF IYT. The reason why I mention that is this is part of what I call my economic modern family, number one. And number two is through the years, and this, so this is back tested, it has often been a lead indicator on a bottom of a market and also on the top of the market. The reason being from a fundamental standpoint is that it represents the demand side of the economy. So if the demand side starts to slip, even when things are going up, 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 I would take that as a warning. Right now, the momentum has flashed to a negative divergence, and it is the first one of my economic modern family to test a very important moving average, which is the 50-day moving average. So if it continues to sell off, confirms the momentum with price, I would take that warning seriously. The second indicator is simple. It's junk bonds. There has been a huge influx into junk bonds by investors, which means basically that they're looking at companies that are typically not necessarily good on their balance sheets. So therefore, they buy the junk of those bonds and they get a very high yield. That's the ultimate risk on environment. If that goes away and we start to see a sell off, that would be warning number two. And warning number three is the volatility itself, the volatility index, which has actually not been selling off even when the market is going to new highs. At this point, it's still underperforming, well underperforming, but that actual opposite of what we've seen in IYT has a positive momentum on divergence, which means that has already shown the potential if the price confirms that that could go up. You put those three things together, you basically don't have to listen to any analysts. All you have to do is watch the predictability of that and the, the, the accuracy of those three things is phenomenon and has been the thing that has kept us on the right side of the market for the last 12 years. We don't know when a correction, if a correction is going to happen, uh, how deep it would be, if it's a 5%, 10%, 20% or worse. Typically, February isn't always a great month for the stock market. Um, but with that said, there are these other pockets that are continuing to rally regardless of what's going on. And those are the areas that you can continue to look. Right now, the, the, the big tech has uh, lots of earnings coming out, starting with Apple throughout this week and next week. There are many, many analysts out there. I'm not one of them, but there are many analysts out there who do believe that those things can rally. And when you look at the charts, they're into a tremendous amount of resistance. But if it clears the resistance, it's possible you can get some movement there. In terms of staying on the sideline, though, besides what we just talked about, which is looking at those three indicators, if they don't pan out, it is possible that we will see earnings much better. We'll get a stimulus package sent and the market can continue to rock and roll into new highs. So I would not necessarily stay, say, stay sideline. But what I would say is what you decide to get into, whether it's this new short squeeze selling, whether it's in the electric vehicle space or in the Bitcoin space or in um, any of these really hot areas right now, space frontier itself, like the stock space, whatever it is, this is really a market now that for people who don't have a set of rules to follow could be very dangerous and for those who do it can be extremely profitable so this is a good time if you haven't already gotten an education some level of knowing when your risk is where it is position sizing accordingly taking profits on the way up this would be the time to do it and there's a plethora of people out there who can give you that education market gauge included Tesla was the first one to really prove that the fundamentals didn't matter. 
and the hatred for Elon Musk and that company was huge. And all of the short sellers in Tesla have been burnt over and over and over again. And they still come out of the woodwork to short sell. So that was really, yes, that's like sort of the granddaddy of this new Wall Street bets, which is the short squeeze buyers that are the younger generation. Is it the new normal? Well, certainly for now it is. But again, as I mentioned before, if you don't have a set of rules, if you're already in a stock because you like it fundamentally, that's one reason. Like, for example, let's take space, which is Virgin Galactic. So if Tesla has now become the model for these short squeeze traders, these Wall Street bets group and these young groups, I would not necessarily poo-poo it or root against them. I would trigger, try to figure out how to play the game. So as we were talking about more than ever, it's important to understand rules. This is another game where rules becomes extremely important because there is a system in volatility that can be extremely reliable. So if you're already in the stock, like Space Virgin Galactic, because you wanted to capitalize on what's already happening as a trend, which is Bezos and uh, Branson and Musk all interested in being space barons, and you were in already, you're like, yay, okay, got the attention of Wall Street bets. But if you're not, and you just wanna take advantage of the action on a day trade, Again, set of rules. There are rules called opening ranges that we all did when we were trading on the floor during the commodities boom, when moves like what's happening in space and workhorse and some of the other stocks, GameStop, as you mentioned before, were typical on a day-to-day -day basis. And so again, you could play, you could use an opening range rule. I'm happy to teach about that at some time in the future. Or you could actually just say that you know, I want to try to figure out what is, have a high short float, would give me a good reason why it's in. And again, go back to some education where you get in because you have a solid risk and it's more of a position swing trade because you don't want a day trade. This is a field that I think is going to last like it lasted from 1979 to 1982 during the commodities heyday. Everything comes to an end, but I wouldn't be rooting for one right now. If anything, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. This is the time when some of the older folks can learn that these retail investors who care nothing else about making money are onto something, at least for now. <music>